many men are so privileged as we are to see a new civilization born before our own eyes. There are times in the streets of Virginia City when I question the use of the word civilization. It is always that way with the new hop sing. A diamond, before it is polished, seems no more than a clot of dirt. Is this the American way to toast on an American occasion? To your son on his 18th birthday. To my son Jimmy's American birthday. To the joining of the past and the present. To create a finer future. You have honored my house, and now there is much to do. You are fortunate to know the Cartwright family so well, Hop Singh. It pleases me to know that here in America, the affection and respect of the sons for the father is as strong as it is in the land of our ancestors. The Cartwrights have great respect for you, my uncle, and admiration for your son. I am happy that the younger sons will honor us with their presence at the birthday party. And do not worry, Hop Singh. Your friend Hoss will be fed as well as if you yourself did the cooking. We're good together, Billy Boy. We're gonna have to clean a lot more of this dirt out of here before Virginia City is a fit place to live. Little Joe? Is it sure enough true we're going to have bird's nest for dinner at Jimmy Chang's birthday party? Well, that's what Adam told us. Well, I ain't for sure I'm going to like that. Oh, well, it's something to eat. You'll like it all right. I'm sick. Paul, Adam, come on here, quick! I'm sick. What happened to you, boy? What happened to you, boy? Can you talk, Hop Singh? Looks like he's been in a pretty bad fight. Yeah. Paul, Paul, let me help him in the house. You forget about it. Hop Singh, all right. It's Chinese business only. What do you mean by that, Paul? You don't think he's tangled up in one of them Tong things we heard about, do you? No, I don't, son. The Tong is a protective organization composed of civilized people. I wonder how much more this has been going on. A lot of it. Particularly in the California gold mines. Didn't think anybody had spread over the mountains. Well, why would anybody want to do a thing like this? Because Hop Singh is Chinese. That's the craziest thing I ever heard of, Paul. I feel like going in there and tearing that town apart board by board. No, you won't, son. You'll go to Jimmy Chang's birthday party tomorrow, just as you planned. I suppose we just forget about the fact that somebody beat up on Hop Singh. We're not going to forget about it, but we're not going to stir up more trouble for the Chinese than they already have. You sure you got enough money? Oh, yes, sir, Paul. We, we done paid for Jimmy Chang's present. We're just going to go pick it up. All right. Well, we'll see you later. What was it you wanted, Lee Chang? Oh, today is birthday of my son. Well, ain't that nice. <laughs> I would like to buy 18 small American flags. Uh -huh. I, uh, 
You're plumb out of them flags, ain't you, Hammond? Hmm? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. I, I forgot. I don't have any American flags, Chang. I'm sorry. What are you sorry for? I don't have any. You'll have to go some other place. Uh, thank you. I will try Campbell's on C Street. You don't have none either. And neither does anybody else in town. Chang, my friend. Ah, Mr. Vernon, Mr. Adam. It would seem my unworthy nephew feeds the food to bring good health. It would seem Hop Singh feeds my brother Hoss a few extra servings, too. <laughs> well, there's a big day in your life, Chang. You'd be mighty proud of that boy of yours. Mr. Cartwright, could I ask you a question, please? Well, of course. Anything you want, you know that. There are customs of your people I do not understand. I'd wish for my son an American birthday party. I wouldn't worry about it. Just give him a cake with candles. Oh, yes. It must be candles and not flags. Now, what do you mean, Jane? I had thought to put American flags on the cake, but I understand it is not permitted. Who says so? Oh, it's no matter. Chang, did Hammond refuse to sell you American flags to put on Jimmy's cake? I did not understand. I do not wish trouble. Ben, it's good to see you. And what can I do for my favorite customers? We'd like to buy some American flags. I don't have any of them little ones, Ben. And how did you know we wanted some of those little ones? You know, maybe we wanted a great big one. Well, do you? You run in the store now, Jesse? No. No, I just take care of my own affairs, that's all. Well, then stay out of ours. You pack a grudge a long time, Adam. Well, how about it, Hammond? I'm just sure we don't have none. Now, why don't you take a nice, hard look? We're right here. Well, here's some of them. <laughs> I didn't know I had any left. Let's see, that's three, four, five, six, seven. How many of them did you need? Eighteen. They're to be put on a birthday cake. Oh. There's a few extra. That'll be a dollar. Thank you. Adam. You shouldn't let Jesse Tibbs get under your skin that way. I can't help it. Nothing but a cattle thief and a hired gun, and yet he walks around loose. He'll crap himself in time. And the full man. Well, this town's getting pretty hard up for somebody to run for mayor, isn't it? Adam, is Jesse Tibbs still foreman of that ranch that Andy Fulmer bought out South of Carson? As far as I know. Mm. Uh, Singh, the business with the flags with Lee Chang. Yeah, that sounds just about like the kind of tactics that Fulmer would use. First the Irish and now the Chinese. America for the Americans. That's a pretty tired platform. Adam, do me a favor. Will you take these flags over to Lee Chang? Tell him that Hammond just misunderstood him. What are you up to? Uh, somebody I want to talk to. Come in. Ah, and Cartwright, I'm rightly honored. To what do I owe the pleasure of this visit, Mr. Cartwright? You don't have to go through any of the formalities, Mr. Fulmer. We've known each other for some time. Ah. What school did you get that from? School of Hard Knocks, same one you went to, Ben. 
Only I don't call myself a lawyer. Folks get in trouble, they come to me for advice. Ain't nothing in the law that says I can't charge a fee for helping them. Hmm. Now, just what did you have on your mind, Ben? Andy, I understand you're fixing to run for mayor. That's right. Andy, what's your platform? Virginia City for Virginia City. Short, sweet, and to the point. You like that? Well, it depends on what it means. It means Virginia City belongs to the folks that made it what it is. It means we don't want outsiders. Well, now, what's your definition of an outsider, Andy? Well, now, Ben, you, you live outside the city and you can't vote for me anyhow, even if you would. But I'll be glad to spell it out for you anyway. It means our town's being overrun by foreigners who are willing to work for nothing, and they're taking the bread and butter out of the mouths of folks like us who built this country. Now, by foreigners, Andy, who do you mean? The, uh, the Irish, or the, the Welsh, or the Chinese? Now, before you start giving me any of that high-flown talk about prejudice, you just stop and remember this camp's full of those same Irishmen and Welshmen and Cornishmen, and those are the very people I mean to protect. I wasn't going to give you any high-flown talk about prejudice, Andy. I just wanted to know where you stood. Yeah. Does that mean you're against me, Ben? Well, Andy, it means that if I find out that you or any of your boys had anything to do with beating up my cook, I'll tie a rope around you and I'll drag you up and down Main Street. Now, Ben, like I said before, you don't live in this city. And you can't vote for me no how. So why don't you just stay out of this campaign? I guess you just invited me in. Jimmy Chang, just when I got a surprise birthday present right out the open, we'd have to run into it. I didn't expect to see you till tonight. You are coming to the party, aren't you? Uh, sure we're coming, Jimmy. What's the matter, Hoss? Uh, we really gonna eat bird's nest? My father said he felt the same way about the first piece of apple pie you ever saw. <laughs> see you later. I gotta get to the stable and get to work. Take it easy, Jimmy. He's a good kid. Yeah. Made up his mind to go to college, and he'll do it, too. You reckon he knew this was his birthday present? If he couldn't figure that out, he sure has no sense going to college. Hey, good looking. You know better than to say a thing like that in public. You didn't seem to mind it so much last night. Why, Billy Wheeler, I wasn't even with you last night. Then who were you with, Sally? Tommy Gaines or Ned Wilkins or, or the Pierce kid? Or maybe him? What if I was? I didn't know you was making fun. I'd slap your mouth. Let go of me. Suppose I told your daddy what you just said. What do you think old J.R. did to you, huh? <laughs> now, you just be nice, and I won't tell. Let go of her. Let go of her. Why don't you try and make me? Boy, you just made the biggest mistake of your life. The biggest mistake you'll ever make. Jimmy. Let me look at that cut. That's all right, Miss Sally. Leave me alone. All I did was bathe your face. A girl would do that for anyone. Yes, anyone. I didn't mean it the way it sounded. That's all right. I'm used to it. Here, I'll put some more water on it. Sally. Father. Get into the house. But, Father. Did you hear me? Why, what have I done? You've disgraced my name, flouting yourself in front of this heathen. I was just helping Jimmy. Billy Wheeler hit him. And I thank Billy Wheeler for that. 
Father, how can you say that? Jimmy didn't do anything. You get into the house before I thrash you. I'm not afraid of you, Father. I haven't done anything wrong. Every time I look at a boy, you see evil. Shame! <laughs> Sally! You keep away from her. You shouldn't have done that, Mr. Ridley. Oh, I... oh Father, no! No! Father, no! You've killed her. I told you it was the biggest mistake you ever made. Boy, I sure told you. I wouldn't be too worried if I was you, Lee Chang, about Jimmy. He'll be around in a minute. The old man Ridley probably gave him a few extra chores to do. You know, Mr. Ridley, he's tougher than nails. Oh, Jimmy not mine. He work hard. He do what Mr. Ridley tell him. What do you think, Os? I don't know. That boy's so dang anxious to make his college money, he's done forgot his own birthday party. Yeah, he's almost an hour late. Jimmy! Jim! Jimmy, what happened to you? Pop Shane, get some water and some towels, quick. What is it, my son? They were chasing me. Who was? I had to fight them off, Hoss. They wanted to kill me. Well, why? What did you do? Little Joe. I didn't do anything. Well, something must have happened. Sally Ridley is dead. Her father shot her. It was an accident. They think I killed her. Now, look, Jimmy, I want you to tell me the whole story right from the very beginning. It was an accident, Joe. I liked Sally. I wouldn't ever hurt her. We know he's in there. Send him out. Send him out or we're coming in to get him. Somebody will get hurt. Just keep calm. Ain't nobody gonna hurt that boy. We'll handle this thing proper. Little Joe, you come cover me. First man that tries to come in this house is gonna have to clam over me. We're not looking for any fight. We want the boy is all. Well, you ain't getting him. He killed somebody. And he's gonna get what's coming to him. Now, that's a bit hasty, Billy. Suppose we give him a choice. Either we take the boy in jail, or we get a rope. What about it? You wait here. Will they take my son? No, Lee Chang. If anybody does any taking around here, it's going to be little Joe and me. But you believe, Jimmy. Look, don't worry, Lee Chang. Sheriff Halstead's a fair and honest man. He'll know the truth when he hears it. Father, in America, a man is innocent until proven guilty. Isn't that right, Hoss? That's right, Jimmy. Go on. Let's go, Hoss. Opsink, Adam's going to stop by for us. Tell him we're down at the jail. you let him have him. We could have strung him up. Billy, Billy, Billy. Don't you remember what Fulmer said? What we do is let it boil. We just let it boil. Now, you've told me the whole truth. You're sure you've left nothing out, son? I've told it just the way it happened. Well, I'm inclined to believe him. How many other folks will is the question. Well, I believe them. I've known Jimmy and his family a long time. They're good people. Sure, they're good people. But that doesn't tip the scales. Not with some who have political ambitions. You mean Andy Fulmer? Yeah. He's been waiting for this kind of thing to happen ever since he declared for mayor. Come on, boy. 
Jerry. Everything's gonna be all right. This is for your own protection, Jimmy. You'll be better off here than you will at home. I understand, Sheriff. See, Jimmy, this doesn't mean that, that you're guilty. Even an innocent man, if he's suspected of murder, can't be allowed to roam the streets. I know. You'll be all right here. All right, Billy, send him in. How are you, Mr. Ridley? Andy. Won't you sit down? All of our sympathies are with you, Mr. Ridley. We all want you to know how deeply we feel for you in this, this hour of your great loss. Thank you, Andy. It's a tragedy, Mr. Ridley. It's a real tragedy. And if we hadn't let the bars down in the first place, a thing like this couldn't ever have happened. Now, you know me, Mr. Ridley. I speak my mind plain. Your daughter went out with lots of American boys, didn't she? Sure she did, pretty little thing like her. And did any of those American boys ever act any way other than decent with her? Of course not. Would an American boy have shot her down in cold blood? There's something I think you should know. That boy didn't kill my daughter. It was an accident. I had the gun. The gun went off. That boy didn't kill my daughter, Andy. I did. Now, you just sit there, Mr. Ridley. You had a very trying day. Jesse, haven't you got some work to do? Sure. Sure, Andy. You know, sometimes when a man suffers a great tragedy, it can affect his mind. You understand that, don't you, Mr. Ridley? Yes, yes, I understand that. And in his grief, he, he might forget things or, or even imagine things that never really happened. Yes, yes, that's true. Well, I'm sorry to say this, old friend, but I see signs of that in you in your eagerness to do what's right, you're willing to shoulder all the blame for Sally's death. Well, shouldn't I, Andy? Now, now let's face the truth. Didn't that boy, that, that James Chang, didn't he provoke whatever caused Sally's death? As the Lord is my judge, that boy caused Sally to die. Yes. And our city's overrun with these undesirables. And that breeds the sort of thing that happened to you. And every decent citizen in this town wants to see that that don't never happen again. Now, ain't that right, Mr. Ridley? Yes, yes, Andy. All right, then. Now, let you and me sit down and examine what's really right for Virginia City. You asked me to order members of our town to fight, if need be, to protect your son. My son has not killed anyone. He has committed but one crime. He is Chinese. Is James Chang Chinese? Has he not given up the ways of his ancestors? Has he not taken the dress and the custom of another people? He is ambitious. He desires to educate himself in this new land. He knows that one day the Chinese will take their place alongside other people who have come from many other places to make this great country. Young eyes can see great distances, and risk is the privilege of youth. Your son has accepted the new ways, and with this, he has accepted the risk. He is my son, and they talk in the streets of killing him. It is written, it is better to sacrifice one lamb than to cause the slaughter of the entire flock. Some men will fight, even to save a lamb. Order, order, please. Now, I don't want to have to remind you folks, this is an official inquest, and I expect order. Continue, Mr. Wheeler. Like I said, 
I seen this Chinese boy carrying on with Sally Ridley. So naturally, I went and told her father. You know the rest. Now, Your Honor, aren't we taking an awful lot for granted here? Now, surely, Your Honor. Ben Cartwright's been around long enough to know the facts when he hears them. But this is not a trial, Andy. It's an inquest. Is that all, boy? Well, ain't that enough, Your Honor? Don't get smart with me, son. Now, you just get down and let's have the next witness. Miss Amanda Ridley. Now, Amanda, just tell us in your own words what happened last night. Jimmy Chang killed my sister. Order, order in the court, please. Order, order, please. Amanda, we're not passing judgment here. We're just trying to get the facts. Well, what did you expect? Everybody in town knows what kind of a girl my sister was. Always flaunting herself, fluffing her hair and mincing around boys. What's the matter with her? She's jealous of her own sister. Um, please, Amanda, I know how hard this must be for you, but all we want to hear is what you saw. Well, I heard a shot. I ran to the stable. There was Jimmy Chang bending over my sister. There was a gun next to him. My poor father was standing there, just staring. And the gun was by Jimmy Chang? It was right by him, right where he dropped it. Now, Your Honor, how do we know that was Jimmy Chang's gun? Now, who saw him drop it there? Ben, you're not trying to tell us that gun just fell out of the sky, are you? <laughs> ben Cartwright, I'm not going to put up with any more of your outbursts. All right, Amanda, that's all. Mr. Ridley, will you take the stand? Mr. Ridley, do you feel the testimony you've heard here is substantial of the way it happened? As the Lord is my witness, that boy caused the death of my daughter. Thank you, Mr. Ridley. You missed up, Doc. Jimmy Chang, stand up. It is the finding of this inquiry that you, Jimmy Chang, stand trial for the murder of Tyler Ridley. Inquest adjourned. I sure don't want to miss that trial. They'll hang him for sure, won't they, Mr. Fulmer? Oh, that's hard to tell. A jury trial, sometimes you just can't depend on a jury. Like I told you boys before, when I take over this town, I want it clean. Maybe, maybe we ought to see to it there ain't no trial, boss. Jesse, I sure like the way you think. We own obligation to this town, boys. And he's right. We're all merchants. We all earn our living here. If we let the Chinese take over, our property will be worthless. I never spoke truer words, Cyrus. That's my way of thinking exactly. And if it wasn't my way of thinking, I wouldn't be running for mayor. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing, Andy. I ain't a man to jump into things, you know. Well, you ain't a man to stand by and watch your own house burn down without tossing on a pail of water either, are you, Cyrus? Oh. Uh, now, if we let that Chinaman get away with killing that white girl, it's just the same as saying we don't even care what happens to our own wives and daughters. Well, well, what do you think we ought to do, Andy? I think we ought to put a stop to it right now. Looks like you're a little off your game today, little Joe. Yeah. Sir, I'm holding a meeting over at Hammond's store. I don't like the looks of it. Andy Fulmer in the height of his glory. So-called cause and a hot-headed audience to listen to his ranting. What do you think it'll come to, Pa? I don't know. But if Fulmer can fire up that crowd enough, they'll sure enough try to break Jimmy out of jail. Oh, don't you think we can hold him off, Pa? No, I've got no right to ask you cartwrights to get mixed up in this thing. You got no help either, have you? 
Uh, you want to get rid of me, Sheriff, you're going to have to throw me out. Jimmy Chang's a friend of mine. Well, Sheriff? Well, I, I won't lie and say that I'm not pleased, but... Well, to make this thing legal like, I, I'd better swear you all in as deputies. That's good. Always did want to wear one of them deputy badges anyhow. Like you were right. I don't think there's any more doubt about it, Sheriff. Look, there's only one way to avoid trouble, and that's by getting that boy out of town fast. But I can't rightly do that, Ben. Well, you can't rightly let them come in and lynch him either, can you? Ben, Jimmy Chang has been indicted for murder. That's my sworn duty to uphold the law, and it's also the sworn duty of you and your sons now. What are we supposed to do, sit here and wait? That's the way it is. Look, Pa, even if we get Jimmy out, we gotta get him past those men. Yeah, I suppose nothing would make Fuma happier than to kill Jimmy Chang while attempting to break jail. Now, look, Ray, there's uh, no law that says a deputy can't walk out of here, is there? No, there isn't. If you boys want to change your mind, I can release you from any obligations. No, that's not what I meant. I just don't like the idea of sitting around here while Andy Fulmer calls every turn. What's on your mind, son? Well, Pa, I can't help thinking about Amanda and the way she behaved on the witness stand. Now, I've known her a long time. I just don't believe she's turned that bitter. You think you might want to talk to her? I'd like to try. Oh, it's worth a chance. Maybe through her you could break down Ridley's story. I don't like the idea of you going out there, though. No, horse and I could cover him, Pa. Oh, that'll be playing right in the former's hands. And there'd be three less guns in here for him to worry about. I'll get through all right, Pa. Well, I wasn't thinking of you getting through, Adam. I was thinking of you getting back in. You know, don't sell Fulmer short. He's got Ridley on his side, and he's going to do everything in his power to keep him there. Well, I'm going to risk it. All right, Adam. What's the matter, Cartwright? The stink of that woman killer get too thick for you in there? You get out of my way. You sure are proud of Adam. Ain't no law says we can't stand out here in the street. Yeah, why are you Cartwright so nervous? We ain't doing nothing. We'll just keep on doing it. It'd be all right. My father isn't home. Well, it's really you I wanted to talk to, Amanda. Would you like to sit down? Thank you. Well, all of us used to have some mighty good times in this house. We haven't entertained since Mother died. Seven years. Must get kind of lonely for you sometimes. I had obligations, and I assumed those obligations. Have to be at such a high price. Do you think it's been easy keeping the household together with Mother gone? No, I don't. I, I watched my own father do it for years. Yes, but Sally did everything she could to make things difficult. <laughs> yeah, Pa had his moments with all of us, too. She had no respect for anything, not for me or for my father. Look, Amanda, stop feeling sorry for yourself. Life hasn't passed you by. Why can't you Cartwrights mind your own business and let us mind ours? Because it happens to be everybody's business when a boy's life's at stake. You can stand there and say that to me when my sister's been murdered. What do you expect me to do? Go over there to Jimmy Chang and tell him it was all a big mistake? If that's what it was, yes. Jimmy Chang said he didn't have a gun. He said it was an accident. Now, look, Amanda, I've always admired you because you had the courage to stand up for what you thought was right. 
Sally was just exactly the way you used to be. No more, no less. You don't need to pretend with me, Amanda. Oh. I don't know. I've been so alone. What should I do? Tell the truth. What are you doing in my house, Cartwright? There's no woman safe in this town. How dare you persecute my daughter? It's not your daughter that's being persecuted. There's a young boy over in that jail that's just about to face a lynch mob. That boy's a murderer and a heathen. He's been indicted for his crime. Indicted, but not convicted. Or don't you think Jimmy Chang deserves a fair trial? James Chang will have a fair trial. Not unless you tell Andy Fulmer that's what you want him to have. Oh, Mr. Fulmer's an honorable man. He doesn't need me to tell him what to do. What's the matter, Mr. Ridley? You're afraid to face up to Andy Fulmer and the principles you value so highly? I fear no man. Well, then talk to him. I'll go with you, Father. He got to stand trial anyway. He ain't even no citizen. That's right. We're gonna let those Cartwrights tell us how to run our town. They don't live in Virginia City. And this town is for us that lives here, for us Americans. That's right. There are only three Cartwrights in there. Adam left. And we'll see to it he don't get back in again. I say rush the jail. Sheriff Hall still will be on our side when he sees we mean business. Yeah. What are you up to, Cartwright? Stop for a walk with some friends of mine. What's the matter, Jesse? You seem nervous. Mr. Ridley, is, is Adam trying to force you to do something against your will? No man forces me against my will. I want to talk with Mr. Fulman. You want him to talk to me, J.R.? I've got to talk to you about everything, about those people out there. Why, certainly, J.R., not a man in this town can't speak to me whenever he wants to. You come right on in. Miss Amanda? Let's uh, step into my private office. We can talk freely there. Well, I'll wait out here. Won't you sit down, Amanda? Thank you. JR? Now then. What was it you wanted to say to me, JR? I want those people out there to know the truth. I want to tell them what I told you this morning. And what did you tell me this morning, J.R.? Why, that Jimmy Chang is innocent. That my daughter's death was an accident. And what did I say then, Mr. Ridley? I just don't remember. Didn't I say that I wanted to help you? Didn't I say that the people of Virginia City were behind you 100%? Did you see all those people out there in that street? Why do you think they're there? They're there because they're your friends, J.R., just as I'm your friend. Because we both believe in the same principles. We believe in honesty and decency and the American way. Now, ain't that right, Mr. Ridley? Yes, I suppose so. Father, you... Now, you don't suppose. You know. Those people are out there because they're your friends. They're out there to honor you. They're there to honor a man who stood up in his hour of great tragedy. Not for his own sake, but for the sake of an entire city. Now, are you going to let them down, J.R.? Are you going to let your daughter die in vain? They're waiting for you out there, J.R. Well, Mr. Ridley? I have no right to stand in the way of my friends, the people here in Virginia City. Like I say, J.R., I like your ideas fine. You talk to me any time. The door's always open. What happened in there? Adam, it was horrible. It's as if my father has no mind of his own. 
Well, I'll change his mind. No, Adam. Let me do it. I can make him understand that he's got to tell the truth. All right, if you think you can. Remember, Amanda, Jimmy Chang's life depends on your father telling the truth. I realize that now, Adam. Come along, Amanda. Just where do you think you're going, Cartwright? Now, why don't you leave those folks alone? Cartwright here seemed to be in a hurry. We figured he was planning to pester the Ridleys some more. Well, you boys put those guns away. Jesse, you know we're not men of violence. You go right ahead, Mr. Cartwright. Just do whatever you like. I'll do just exactly that, Mr. Bowman. You sure you don't want me to stop him, boss? Well, why should you do that, Jesse? Just when we got things right where we want them. Well, Joe, do you ever taste anything like these jailhouse beans? Yeah. No, yeah, but I'm trying not to remember it. What you mean to say is you, you don't ever remember tasting anything as good, don't you? Yeah, that's what I mean. It's almost worth breaking a law to get this kind of chow. Jimmy, you ain't eat a bite of yours. Why don't you try to get some of that down? Thanks, Hoss, but I'm not hungry. Hungry? What's that got to do with it? You think the only time a man can eat when he's hungry? Yeah, you haven't got any kind of fool idea like that, do you, Jimmy? I didn't kill Sally. You believe me, don't you, Hoss? Jimmy, you ought, you ought to have more sense than even ask such a question. But there are some people in this town who think I did. How can they, Hoss? Jimmy, don't you worry none. You got lots of friends in this town. Friends that aren't going to let you down. Here he comes. Let him in. I really thought they tried to stop you from getting you back in here. Well, Fulmer was so sure of himself, he figured he didn't have to. Well, what about Amanda? Did you find out anything from her? Oh, I sure did. Anyway, I've convinced her she should tell the truth. I thought we had Ridley convinced, and then we got over to Fulmer's, and... I don't know, Fulmer's got some strange kind of hold on the man. He's... It's like so much clay in his hands. Anyway, Amanda's still working on him. What, do you think she'll get anywhere with him? Not if she doesn't. We've got a lynch mob on our hands. Father, how can I make you understand what I'm saying to you? I'm on the side of right. Right. You're just doing what Andy Fulmer wants you to do. That boy's going to die. Your sister died, too, didn't she? Yes, she did. Until now, I, I don't believe I really cared. But now I know you don't care. How dare you speak like that to me? I dare speak like that because it's the truth. Your sister brought disgrace on us. And it isn't really Jimmy Chang you're trying to punish, is it? You're trying to punish Sally. Father. Was her death really an accident? Or did you pull that trigger on purpose? Is that why you're afraid to talk? Amanda, as God is my witness, it was an accident. Then go out there and tell them. Oh, Father, we've both lied to ourselves. We never really believed the things we said about Sally. And if we let Jimmy Chang die, we'll really be condemning Sally. You and I, Father, we're the guilty ones. Now, boys, you all know where I stand. I'm just interested in doing what's right for our city. Are we going to let those Cartwrights stand between us and what we know is right? I say, let's rush them and get them out of that jail. Come on. Huh? Here they come. Attorneys! 
Let's put a few shots over their heads. That should scatter them. convinced him. Stop! Stop it, everybody! Stop! Get in here, J.R. Those Cartwrights will kill you. It isn't the Cartwrights this town needs to fear, Fulmer. Ah, J.R., we understand each other. That won't work again, Andy. I'm going to tell Sheriff Halstead the truth. Now, we've been through this before. I'm going to tell him the truth. Get him. Why did you kill him? What? What are you saying? You, you told me to kill him. Murderer. You filthy murderer. Get him! He just killed my best friend! Jesse, stop the gun. Father! Father! My father wanted to tell you something. I know what it was, because I was part of it. We lied on the witness stand this morning. My sister's death was an accident. Jimmy Chang didn't have any gun. My father killed Sally. That's what he wanted to tell you. Well, Fulmer, three dead. You satisfied? You trying to make a murderer out of me, Ben? You try to murder this town. You still want this man for your mayor? No, no, no. Hold on, wait a minute, folks. Hold it, hold it. Uh, this is a, this is a terrible thing that's happened here today, and we sure don't want anything like that to happen here again. Uh, folks, folks, listen. You know how I stand, what I believe in. I want what's right for Virginia City. I'm afraid you're at liberty, Mr. Chang. Come on, Jimmy, didn't you hear him? Or don't tell me you done got to where you like it in here. But, but what? But what? I thought you were the one who had the fine ideas about going to college. Yes, I do, but... Well, if you're going to go to college, Jimmy, you got to bust out of this jail before you can start. It's all right, Jimmy. Come on. You can go home. It's all over now. Go on. 